By now, you've seen a range of different learning algorithms. Within supervised learning, the performance of many supervised learning algorithms will be pretty similar. And what matters less will often be whether you use learning algorithm A or learning algorithm B. But what matters more will often be things like the amount of data you train these algorithms on, as well as your skill in applying these algorithms, things like that's because uh, your choice of the features that you design to give the learning algorithms and how you choose the regularization parameter and things like that. Even though but the next set of there's one more algorithm that uh, is very powerful and is very widely used both within industry and in academia, and that's called the support vector machines. And uh, compared to both logistic regression and neural networks, the support vector machine, or the SVM, sometimes gives a cleaner and sometimes more powerful way of learning complex nonlinear functions. And so let's, let's say you want take to the next videos to uh, talk about Here are that. A couple examples Later in this course, I will do a quick survey of a range of standard, different you know, supervised learning algorithms, just so so very briefly and describe and them. Notice so how the support vector machines are given its popularity and how powerful it is. This will be the last of the supervised learning algorithms that I'll spend a significant amount of time on. As with our development of other learning algorithms, we're going to start by talking about the optimization objective. In order to describe the support vector machine, I'm actually going to start with logistic regression and show how we can modify it a bit and get what is essentially the support vector machine. So in logistic regression, we have our familiar form of the hypothesis there and the sigmoid activation function shown on the right. And in order to explain some of the math, I'm going to use Z to denote theta transpose x here. Here's one way to choose a Now, let's think about what we would like logistic regression to do. If we have an example with y equals 1, and by this I, I mean an example in either the training set or the test set, you know, or the cross-validation set. But if y is equal to 1, then we're sort of hoping that h of x will be close to 1. So right, we're hoping they'll correctly classify that example. And what having h of x close to 1, what that means is that theta transpose x must be much larger than 0. So this greater than, greater than sign, that means much, much greater than 0. And that's because it is z, that is theta transpose x, is when z is much bigger than 0, is far to the right of this figure, that so you know, the output of which is regression becomes close to Given 1. A piece of email, we can then Conversely, if we have an example where y is equal to 0, then what we're hoping for is that the hypothesis will output a value close to 0, and that corresponds to theta transpose x or z being much less than 0, because that corresponds to the hypothesis outputting a value close to 0. If you look at the cost function of logistic regression, what you find is that each example, x comma y, contributes a term like this to the overall cost function. Right? So for the overall cost function, we usually, uh, we would also have a sum over all the training examples and uh, one over n term. But this expression here, that's the term that a single training example contributes to the overall objective function for the just regression. Now, if I take the definition for the form of my hypothesis and plug it in over here, then what I get is that each training example contributes this term, right, ignoring the 1 over m, but it contributes that term to my overall cost function. For the regression. This feature vector, now, let's consider the two cases of when y is equal to 1 and when y is equal to 0. In the first case, let's suppose that y is equal to 1. In that case, only this first term in the objective matters because uh, this 1 minus y term will be equal to 0 if y is equal to 1. So when y is equal to 1, when in our example x comma y, when y is equal to 1, what we get is this term, minus log 1 over 1 plus e to the negative z, where, as similar to the last slide, I'm using z to denote so theta transpose x. And of course, uh, in the cost, we actually have this minus y, so we just said y is equal to 1, so that is equal to 1. I just simplified it away in the expression that I have written down here.
And if we plot this function as a function of z, what you find is that you get this curve shown on the lower left of the slide. And thus we also see that when z is equal to large, that is when theta transpose x is large, that corresponds to a value of z that gives us a very small value, a very fairly small contribution to the cost function. And this kind of explains why when logistic regression sees a positive example with y equals 1, it tries to set theta transpose x to be very large because that corresponds to this term in the cost function. Natural inclination is to go and collect now, to build a support vector machine, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this cost function, this minus log 1 over 1 plus z to the negative z, and, in fact, in and the modify it a little bit. Domain, Let me take um, let me take this point one over here, and uh, let me draw the cost function I'm going to use. The new cost function is going to be flat from here on out, and, that to try to collect and then I'm going to draw something that grows as a straight line, but we've similar to um, the, uh, logistic progression, but this is going to be a straight line also data in this function. So the curves that I just drew in magenta, the curves that I just drew in purple and magenta, so it's a pretty close approximation the cost function used by the logistic regression, except that it's now made up of two line segments. There's this flat portion on the right, and then there's this uh, straight line portion on the left. And uh, don't worry too much about the slope of the straight line portion. It doesn't matter that much. But um, that's the new cost function we're going to use for when y is equal to 1. And you can imagine it should do something pretty similar to the logistic regression. But uh, it turns out that this will give the support vector machine computational advantages and give us later on an easier optimization so problem. I can imagine uh, that Looking at the email be easier for software to, to solve. More sophisticated we just talked about the case of y equals 1. The other case is if y is equal to 0. In that case, Something else if you look at the cost, then only the second the term will apply, because, because the first term goes away, or if y is equal to 0, then you have a 0 here, example, so you're left so only with the second term in the expression above. And so the cost of an example, or the contribution of the cost function, is going to be given by this term over here. And if you plot that as a function of z, so I have here z on the horizontal axis, you end up with this curve. Maybe spammers use and for the support vector machine, line. once again, we're going to and replace this blue line Maybe with something also want similar. To more sophisticated um, and in particular, I'm going to replace it with a new cost that's flat out here, the zero out here, and that then grows because as a spammers actually line. do this because uh, they like have so. Their watches so let me give these yeah. two then functions the names. This function on the left, I'm going to call cost subscript one of z, and this function on the right, I'm going to call cost subscript zero. Z. And the subscript just refers to the cost corresponding to when y is equal to 1 versus when y is equal to 0. Armed with these definitions, we're now ready to build the support vector machine. Here's the cost function, j of theta, that we had for logistic regression. In case this equation looks a bit unfamiliar, it's because previously we had a minus sign outside, but here what I did was I instead moved the minus signs inside this expression, so it just it makes it look a little bit different. For the support vector machine, what we're going to do is essentially take this and replace this with cos 1 of z, that is cos 1 of theta transpose x, and we're going to take this and replace it with cos 0 of z, that is of where the cost one function is what we had on the previous slide, it looks like this, and the cost zero function, again, what we have on the previous slide, it looks like this. So, what we have for the support vector machine is a minimization problem of 1 over m, sum over my training example of yi times cos 1 of theta transpose xi plus 1 minus yi times cos 0 of theta transpose xi and then plus my usual 
where regularization parameter and try to have a more systematic way to choose amongst the options of the many different things you might work on and therefore like so. you're more likely to select now <coughs> by convention for the support vector machine we actually write things slightly differently or we reparameterize this just In very slightly videos, differently I'd like to talk about first we're going to get rid of the one these over m terms and this is just this, this just happens to be a slightly different convention that people use for support vector machines compared to or just a progression. On how to oh, but here's what I mean. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of these In 1 over m terms and this should give me the same optimal value. That's because, right? these videos will uh, because 1 over m is just a constant. You so you know, whether I solve this minimization problem with and 1 over m in front or not, I should end up with the same optimal value for the data. Here's what I mean uh, to, be, to give you a concrete example. Suppose I had a minimization problem that you know, minimize over a row number u of u minus I'd like 5 begin with squared the issue of prioritizing um, plus 1. Right? Well, the minimum, minimum of this happens, and, uh, happens to know the minimum of this is u equals 5. Now, if I were to take this objective function Let's and say multiply you want to build a spam it by 10, here are so a here my minimization of problem is mean over u of and 10 you know, u minus 5 left, squared plus things. 10. And, uh, well, the value of u that minimizes this is still u equals 5. Right? So multiplying something that you're minimizing over by some constant, and right 10 in this case, it does not change the value of u that gives us, um, that, that minimizes this function. So in the same way, what I've done by crossing out this m is all I'm doing is uh, multiplying my objective function by some constant m, and it doesn't change the value of theta that achieves the minimum bit of notational change, which is just In again the more standard convention when using SDN instead of logistic regression, is, how is the following. To represent so for logistic regression, we the, had you know, two terms to the objective function. And the, the first is, is this term, set, which is the cost that comes from the training set, example, and the second is this term, which is the regularization Here's term. One way to choose a and what we had was we had a, we controlled the trade-off between these by saying that we want to Minimize a plus, and then my regularization parameter lambda, for example, and then times um, some of the term b. Where I guess I'm using you know, a to denote this first term, and I'm using b to denote that second term, maybe without the lambda. Whereas the piece of and contains my instead of parameterizing this as a plus lambda b, um, we could, and, and and so what we did was. By setting different values for this regularization for parameter lambda, we could trade off the relative weight between how much we want to fit the training set well, that is minimizing A, versus how much we care about keeping the values in parameters small. So that would be the parameters B. For the support vector machine, just by convention, we're going to use a different parameter. So instead of using lambda here to control the relative weighting between you know, the first and the second terms, we're instead going to use a different parameter, which by convention is called C, and we're instead going to minimize C times A plus And given a piece of email like that shown on the right, so for logistic regression, if we set a very large value of lambda, that means you know, give B a very high weight. Here is that if we set C to be a very small value, that that corresponds to giving B a much larger weight than, C, than A. So this is just a different way of controlling the trade-off, or just a different way of parameterizing how much we care about optimizing the first term versus how much we care about optimizing the second term. And if you want, you can think of this as the parameter C, playing a role similar there, to the word one over lambda. Appear, at least not in this, this and it's not that these the two uh, so equations or these two expressions will be equal if c equals so 1 over lambda, that's not the case. But rather is that if c is equal to 1 over lambda, then these two optimization example, objectives should give you the same value, the same optimal value of data. So just filling that in, I'm going to cross out lambda here and write in the constant c there. To use for this representation. So that gives us and our overall features, optimization objective function XJ for the support vector machine. Basically and if you minimize that if, uh, function, then you what you have is the parameters given by the SDM. Email and, uh, 
XJ would Finally, be unlike logistic regression, the support vector machine doesn't output a probability. So me a Instead, what we have is we have this cost function, which we minimize to get By the, the way, even though I described as what a support vector machine does, is it just makes words, a prediction in practice, of y b equal 1 or 0 directly. So through a the hypothesis will out predict 1 uh, in the training set if to pick the most data in transpose x is greater than or equal to 0 and will predict and use zeros as your so features. Having so learned the parameters data, this is the form of the hypothesis the for the support vector machine. So, that was a mathematical definition of what a support vector machine does. In the next few videos, let's try to get better intuition about now, what this optimization objective needs to and what are the sorts of hypotheses that the ACA will learn. And we'll also talk about how to modify this just a little bit to learn complex nonlinear functions.